if you've just started getting into the world of nature-based spirituality then you might have come across so many different terms from wicca to pagan, heathen, green witches, forest witches, hedge witches, the list goes on and on and on and it can be very overwhelming when you're just trying to get into things and figure out what is happening and what you might resonate with. Um, so I wanted to make this video and take things back to basics for a second because I know that I've made a lot of videos about some more in-depth specific aspects of paganism so if you just want to go back to basics and understand what paganism actually is then this video is for you. <music> Across the world for thousands upon thousands of years there have been so many spiritualities and religions. In this video I'm going to be primarily talking about Europe and in particular the British Isles because it's where a lot of this comes from. That is not to say that places like Africa and Asia don't have a wealth of incredibly beautiful um, history and religion and myth and folklore um, but this is what I'm going to be talking about in this video because pagan is the term that we generally use for things in the west. Um, so the word pagan actually comes from the Latin paganus and it just means somebody who is living rurally, rustic or of the countryside. This was because a lot of the um, newer religions like Christianity were primarily in the cities to begin with. So if you were called a pagan, it was just some, a country bumpkin, if you will, somebody who just lived, lived in the middle of nowhere and didn't really know what was going on and wasn't keeping up to date with the modern things and was following the old path and the old practices. And it was kind of a derogatory term and this goes on for um, quite a bit. We also have this for things like heathen, um, so heathen would just be someone of the heath, um, so very similar for somebody that is following the old practices. And it was kind of a term that meant um, a peasant religion, um, so it was it was kind of looked down upon and it was a derogatory, derogatory term. And it's important to note as well that the people who were first called pagan wouldn't have been referring to themselves as pagan, they wouldn't have said I'm a pagan, I follow pagan religion. It wasn't like that. The communities were so small and close-knit that you were just part of that community and the people around you and you kind of had similar beliefs and things like that. It was an outside term that was coined for these people. So that's a little bit on the language and how the word actually came to be. You can sometimes ha hear discussions about whether paganism is actually an insult, whether it's actually an offensive term, um, because originally it was an offensive term. So you might be wondering, how did we get to here, where we are today, where there are so many different branches of paganism and so many different things going on? How did that happen from this Latin word thousands of years ago? It's really important to note that pretty much everything we know from um, pre-Christian communities in terms of religions and practices and beliefs comes from people who were not actually part of those communities. So it wasn't part of the tradition to write stuff down, that just wasn't a thing. That's something that came later with things like Christianity. So there wasn't a written record of these gods and goddesses, rituals and things like that, which is why you have to be really careful when you say that you're following, you know, the old druid path because there's not that much that we can definitively say about it. We've got writings from Romans and we've got a lot of um, physical evidence like pottery, stonework, things like that. But we don't have somebody, you know, writing down, this is the ritual that I did and I'm this and I believe in this. It just wasn't like that. So we're kind of piecing all these things together from just fragments that we find everywhere, mainly from writing of people that did not like these people. So we have to look at it through that lens. So you have the British Isles, you have all these different small communities practicing folk religion and they had different gods and goddesses, even dependent on the areas, different beliefs and things like that. You then have the spread of Christianity and this was um, really, really, really big for this area of the world um, because it basically meant that there was just a shift in the whole culture and instead of this um, polytheistic multiple gods um, sort of religions that were being followed, it was Christianity, one God. 
I could make a whole video about the history of the spread of Christianity and the way that it was done and a lot of this was done through repurposing old pagan things for example you will often find some of the oldest yew trees in the country in churchyards because this would be um, sacred old sites and this was repurposed by the church to make the um, pagan community feel like it was an easier shift into Christianity and the two kind of wove together a lot more than we than we would think they would. Things like Christmas which is Yule or Stara which is Easter, a lot of these holidays repurposed for Christianity. So time goes on, Christianity is the main religion of England because once we had the monarchs involved it was a very harsh conversion and this also spread to different areas of the British Isles as well. Time goes on, we've got the Middle Ages, and which is of course very heavily Christian. Then we've got things like the witch trials, which people are starting to really talk about a lot now. Um, and this isn't to say that there weren't people who followed the old ways during this whole time period, but we don't really know. I won't go fully into the witch trials because there's just so much in that and whether it was actually people who were following the old ways or just the persecution of women, a bit of both, probably that. Um, that's just a whole separate topic but I just wanted to give you kind of a timeline so we're going through that still very heavily Christian then we've got you know the age of enlightenment and things uh, where it's all about scientific reasoning again very Christian then in the 19th century things started to shift a little bit we had the romantic movement which kind of re-sparked people's interest in nature and folk tales and um, old traditions and things like that we had the Brothers Grimm and Goethe writing fairy tales and folk tales and there was kind of a, a revival and people being interested in this sort of thing. This went on and on and then we get to the 19th century where we start to see a much bigger revival in old folk traditions. We had things like Alistair Crowley, the Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn, all of these groups of people who were creating spiritual movements from what they deemed as witchcraft and magic and that was a big turning point in what we refer to now as paganism it went from this folksy insulting term used thousands of years ago um to a new movement that that sort of sparked up again so long after these people actually lived so we're in the 20th century We've got this big resurgence going on in occultism, ritual magic, and people are starting to gather groups and communities. I will say there's always going to have been this, but we start to see a big emergence of it again. In the 50s, we have the invention of Wicca by a man named Gerald Gardner. He wrote a couple of different books about witchcraft in the 50s. We have the hippie movement starting in the 60s, um, where there was a lot more free thinking. People were starting to say, actually, I'm not sure that what we've been talking about and following this whole time is right for me and what we want to do. And there was a big sort of trend of occultism and magic. So this goes on and on. We have a lot of different people picking up the different paths of spirituality, tons of books about it, different groups, communities, all sorts of things. It's a big mishmash. And then we get to the modern day where people are still calling themselves pagan, myself included. So that is a very, um, in a nutshell, view of pagans from the first use of the word and who they would have been to now. And there is a professor called Ronald Hutton who is um, just an expert on all things pagan and he's written a ton of books and he differentiates it like pagan with a small p is we can think of that as those people in history following the old ways um to them just the ways um and then paganism with a capital p which you can talk about in terms of modern paganism neo-paganism so what we would call today is as a pagan would be somebody who is looking to follow the old paths and the old practices and there, there are so many different avenues to do this through. So it can be overwhelming if you're kind of interested in this sort of stuff of when, what am I even supposed to learn about? What is going on? Because there's just thousands and thousands of books and resources out there. And the whole point is that paganism is a big mishmash and it's cross 
cultures, languages, times and especially because we are now living in the modern day it is just <laughs> a crazy time to be alive. You literally have all knowledge at your fingertips and that's why all these different sort of cultures come together, all these different teachings come together. We don't have a small community that all think the same thing and discuss the same thing with each other. There is so much that you can look at now. So pagan would be an umbrella term that looks at everything pre-Christian. Even for example, if you followed the Norse gods and goddesses, you, you might refer to yourself as pagan, not everyone does, um, but you might. And a lot of people use it for just generic, nature-based practices. So probably the easiest way to think about it today is that modern paganism tries to draw on the practices that were happening before the Christian time. So for example, in the British Isles, this may mean looking at the Celtic gods and goddesses or local gods and goddesses to your area. Or you might not be interested in god and goddess worship and it's more to do with reverence with nature and the land and a big part of it would also be ritual and community and following the seasonal cycles so that is an absolute whistle stop tour of the language of paganism quick tour through history of the british isles and a little bit of europe and then where we're at today and then i'm going to talk about some of the key features, the prominent features of modern paganism. But before I go any further, I just really wanna say something which I'm so strongly passionate about and I might make a whole video dedicated to this, which is that this doesn't need to be overwhelming and it doesn't need to be confusing and you don't have to feel pressured about anything. I think there's a lot of um, pressure to define yourself these days everything's an aesthetic everything's a label and you know sometimes you can watch these videos which type of witch are you with like a hundred different types of witches it's it's crazy it's complete modern like conjecture it's not a thing it's helpful for finding people who have got similar interests to you and forming communities and things like that and finding the sort of stuff that you're interested in but do not let a label bog you down and the term that i use for myself is pagan and I don't even call it Celtic pagan or anything like that because I feel like I don't have enough resources to follow that path. Um, everyone thinks differently. So pagan for me is just the umbrella term of respect and communion with nature, working with nature which is yourself as well. A lot of my videos I title simple paganism <laughs> because I just want to bring it back to basics and I think it's very overwhelming sometimes we see these videos of people where it, everything is so aesthetic and beautiful and they've got so many different tools and candles of every colour and herbs and crystals and all these things and it makes you feel like oh I can't do anything cool and magical because I don't have this stuff. My take on it is that you don't need literally anything because it's about you and it's about intention. Like you can just put, look at this cup of tea and put your intention into it. And my form of paganism is just so nature focused. That's what, it, that's what it's all about to me. And that's why I always try to take it back to basics and say, you don't need anything. Most of the correspondences and stuff like that were created much later on in, in modern times and mainly by men. So it's really up to you to forge the path that you want to follow. So I'm just going to touch on a couple of the key parts of what we would deem today as paganism, neo-paganism, whatever, just to give a little bit of an idea on the common things that are followed in neo-paganism, not pagan ancestry, because we don't actually know. One of the main things is ritual and ceremony. And this is such a big one because we do actually have a record of this taking place thousands of years ago and all through human history. It's very clear that humans love a ritual. However, we do have evidence of things like human sacrifice, so we might not want to follow with that ritual. But some ways that modern pagans put ritual into their daily lives can be through things like meditation, prayers, invocations, chanting and small rituals in your daily life whether that's morning ritual, evening ritual or doing things like spells. 
communion with nature is also a really really fundamental aspect of modern paganism and i think there's such a resurgence happening now because people are worried about the environment and we're panicked and we are realizing that there's more to the natural world than we have been thinking for all this time and we want to help it and feel connected to it uh, because we are part of it and so communion with nature is a really big part of paganism this can just be through nature walks and just being out in the forest this can be through gardening growing things getting involved in the community doing environmental work activism communion with nature spirits tree spirits fairies things like that depends what you believe in often pagans will look at things like lunar magic and the moon phases so looking at where we are in the month with the moon and how does that correspond to what's going on and us as humans and different things that you want to set intentions for or manifest working in the phases of the moon altars and sacred spaces is something as well that is often a really key feature of modern paganism so this can be having a little spiritual place in your home to do magic and spells um, so just having your magical items there or it can be just to um, have a little special place to celebrate seasons and things like that. A lot of modern pagans like to do divination and that can be through things like scrying in a mirror, it can be through runes, through tarot cards and this is essentially just tapping into your own intuition and spiritual guidance to get insights into things that you you want to know more about community and celebration is a big one as well and this is something which i think is really key to what i do which is just really celebrating each season as it comes and trying to do <laughs> traditional um celebrations so we can look at the different festivals in the year for example Samhain, halloween yule the summer sol solstice and a lot of these are based on the sun and things like that so which is the longest day of the year the shortest day of the year these sorts of things which we kind of we don't really care about anymore but when you would be so connected to the land because of agriculture and if this doesn't grow then we are going to be hungry then you really care a lot more about the seasons and you are trying to bring them in bring in a good harvest and things like that so it's really key for me to try and think about these things and not be disconnected from them just because someone else is doing the farming um not me and my little garden <laughs> growing broccoli um and growing things actually does help you get really connected to the seasons as well because you get to watch stuff um really change and it's it's really fascinating and we're seeing a big resurgence in um pagan festivals and gatherings so big summer solstice celebrations harvest festivals even women's circles things like that where we're seeing people who are like-minded gather together and do a lot of traditional things and um, we have like old english folk dancing and um, the maypole like a lot of different things like this which are sort of coming back a lot of pagans also do a lot of work with ancestry and ancestor reverence so this could be having ancestral altars doing rituals praying speaking to them as guides and trying to gain wisdom from those who came before and um, working on their lineage and any sort of messages and healing and things that come up in their lineage so i just wanted to put those in to give you a little bit of a hint at some of the stuff that is common within modern paganism but again i just want to say that this is not essential there's a lot of things i don't do there's more stuff i do do which isn't on this list and um it's up to you to forge your path and the reason that i use the word pagan is because it's so freeing what was an insult is now just such a general umbrella term that you can say you're a pagan and find people in the community that you connect to that have similar interests to you which i think is the main reason that we should use these terms but you don't have to put yourself in a box for example wicca has quite a lot of, of rules um if that's something that you're interested in then go for it but pagan is just a lot more of a generic term and you can just pull in whatever you want from it because the truth is we don't really know in enough detail what the pre-christian communities were doing we have scattered evidence everywhere and if we were to say oh we follow that you just couldn't do it there's not enough evidence there so we can draw on that we can draw on what people have 
um, discerned over the past hundreds of years and what people are doing now. Um, as I say, a lot of the stuff that we now see as modern witchcraft, like light a red candle for this and stuff like that, that being noted down is very modern. It's not to say that there haven't been correspondences for thousands of years and people haven't done things like that, but as we know it, I would say <laughs> there are no hard and fast rules. It's about what you feel and what you think because it is you that is doing these things and it's about your connection to what you're doing and if you are trying to do tarot or something and you just you don't really feel it you're not getting in it's not really your vibe you don't have to force yourself to do it just because everyone posts really aesthetic photos of their tarot deck with you know candles and crystals all around you don't have to do that to me paganism is walking through the woods and resting my hand on a tree and just taking a moment with it that is as simple as it needs to be. I already know that I have not mentioned a million different things about paganism and this is a very Eurocentric British look at paganism. I know that um, there are so many cultures across the world with different gods and goddesses and religions, spirituality, and I have barely mentioned Ireland, just touching on Celtic mythology. So that is a very, very, brief whistle stop tour of paganism but this is a video for beginners and I wanted to just share a very introductory video just to give you a guide on what do people mean by pagan and where did it come from and what is going on when people say all these different things because I know it can be overwhelming and I don't want people to be overwhelmed I want you to feel um peaceful and content and inspired and creative with these different things um, which is why you should follow follow your heart and what, what you want to do. I mentioned Ronald Hutton so this is a good book to delve into if you want to learn more about the origins of pagans, paganism and then it does go into um, some of the modern bits as well and he's got a lot of books about paganism and loads of other bits of history um, but this is a really good resource. And then from there, I would recommend that you just follow what you're interested in. So, um, for example, I would type in things like Celtic paganism, Druidry, even though how much we know about that is very small. But that is because those types of books are the things that I am interested in. Again, what I said before about building community, Green Witch, again, that's something that I would look for because I know that that's going to be very nature plant focused which is stuff that I'm interested in. So <laughs> I hope this video was helpful, um, I hope it wasn't too overwhelming and I didn't just ramble on and on. Um, I don't often do these sit you down talky for ages videos so if it was a complete ramble I do apologise but if there's anything else that you want to know more about, you're curious about or you want me to make a video about then please do just drop a comment and let me know what you think and I would love to see what you are thinking and what you want to see next. Thank you so much for watching this video and I hope that I will see you in the next one. Give me a like and subscribe if you want to see more and I will certainly be here with you again very soon. Bye!